Dear Firebaser, I have moved on to work with that bald guy, Colt McCandless, to make sweet videos for Google Cloud. Your mission, if you choose to accept it, is to serve the Firebase community in my stead by answering all of their deepest burning questions on all things Firebase. It will be an arduous process, but with some hard work, I know you will succeed. Are you ready to take over, ask Firebase? P.S. I left an arugula and ciabatta sandwich in the micro kitchen. Do not eat it. Wow. Most people just do that kind of thing over email. Jenna's leaving? She's still making videos just with Google Cloud now. But what are we going to do? She was the best at answering Firebase based questions. I could try hosting an episode or two. <laughs> Sweet. You're a fantastic Firebaser. That thing you did was amazing. But Ask Firebase is no joke. Questions are constantly coming in from Twitter, Stack Overflow, all over the place. You need to know remote config. I know remote config. Firestore. I know Firestore. Firebase cloud messaging. Got that one too. It's just a lot of information and expertise. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of my job. Okay, but if you're gonna do this, you need to partner with someone who has a ton of experience. Someone who people know and love, who's organized, focused, laser sharp, and has it all together. Uh, hey, sorry I'm late, but does anyone know where my laptop is? Probably left at your desk. Desk, thank you. You should pick David. You mean the guy who doesn't even know where his laptop is? Where is my desk? It's just around the corner and to the right. Yeah, David is great. So it turns out I don't work in this office. So I'm, I'm just gonna. That guy? That guy. Wow. Hello everyone, and welcome to this episode of Hashtag Ask Firebase. I'm Sumit Chandel, and you know what? I love popsicles, but I hate lollipops. What? Yep. Well, I'm David East, and I'm a developer advocate here, and I, I like both of those things because they're delicious. Gross. Well, today we are going to answer your questions that you've sent in from Twitter, Stack Overflow, and YouTube comments, all tagged with Hashtag ask Firebase. So uh, why don't we get started? Question number one from Kevin. Kevin asks, can you open up APIs for the Firebase console? Specifically, I'm looking to be able to automate user and role provisioning for team members. So Kevin, you actually can do that today. So Firebase uses a identity uh, access management uh, system that the same one that Google Cloud uses. And Firebase uh, is built on top of Google Cloud, so they share the same IAM permissions. So there is a Google Cloud IAM REST API that allows you to provision those roles to team members. And so you can do that automatically and automatically, whatever matically. It's pretty simple to do, just one REST request, and we will put a link in the description below. So great. Question, Kevin. Next, next question. question. This next question comes from Frederick on Twitter. And Frederick asks, when will Dart officially be supported for writing cloud functions? Well, that's a great question, Frederick. So at the moment, you can't run Dart um, on cloud functions. But what you might be interested in is something called Cloud Run. If you've used Docker before, you might be familiar with the concept of containers that allow you to have a runtime, as well as your application code or logic, all packaged into one container that you can run as a kind of ephemeral package uh, in the cloud and have accessible uh, to you from anywhere to have access to that point of functionality. Well, Cloud Run is kind of similar. Um, you can create a package in whatever language you like, uh, whether that's Dart, Python, Fortran, C++, what have you, uh, any language, and create this package, write the logical code that you want to run and access, and then have an endpoint that you can use that you can hit with your application whenever you want to access that piece of functionality. So if you've got some Dart code, for example, implementing some really useful stuff that you want to reuse in your app, you can use Cloud Run to put that into a package, put it behind an endpoint, and access it. Uh, I know I love using it for Fortran. Big Fortran users right here. Yeah. Great question, Frederick. You know why I'm so happy? Why? Because we got another question. 
This next question comes from Angie. And Angie asks, has anybody done a phone authentication with Firebase and React hooks before? Great question, Angie. For those of you who aren't familiar with uh, React hooks, they are a new feature of React that has really taken the world by storm. I guess you could say everyone's hooked on React hooks. With React, you have a component-based architecture that usually starts with a top app component, and then you have these sub or uh, these child components. So something like a form and then the button within the form, and that we hold state at the topmost component, and then we pass it down with props. And when with React, while that is a really beautiful and simple process, it can become difficult at time, constantly handing things down to the tree and then making sure that they get updated and passed up and state being re-rendered. It's something that a lot of different solutions have come out in the past to try to simplify this. Um, and usually they have been more so third-party solutions. And Hooks is really amazing because it allows us to do this in any component down the tree. So I can actually get a hold of state and reuse it without having to do all this crazy management myself. And it's really awesome. And since we at Firebase are big React fans and we are so excited about it, we are in the beginning stages of making a brand new JavaScript library integration between React and Firebase called React Fire. And right now, you can actually use a very early alpha version. And if you're interested in doing that, put a link in the description. And what you can do is you can use a Firebase React hook for getting a user, so something saying like uh, use user, and you can check the current uh, state of the user. And then as we continue to build this library out, you will add more methods for things such as phone authentication. But that shouldn't stop you though, Angie, because React uh, hooks are extremely simple to write. And if you want to see how we're currently doing it, it's up on GitHub. So if you just check out the current hooks that we have, you can see that they all follow a pretty common pattern. So you can uh, even do this today before we have support in it in the library. Great question, Angie. Rock, paper, question. This next question comes from Jim. And Jim asks, I'm currently using FCM, Firebase Cloud Messaging, and I want to send a notification to my user after something specific happens. Uh, how do I go about doing that? Great question, Jim. And um, there's a few different uh, takes on how you can kind of handle that situation. Uh, when you say something specific happens, um, I would imagine that this could be some kind of event that happens in the app. Um, so maybe something if you're logging analytics, for example. Um, so there's, there's different ways you can handle messaging, sending an FCM to users when something specific happens. First, let's talk about just Firebase Cloud, me cloud Messaging and uh, using analytics. So let's say um, after, I don't know, um, someone purchases something, that's when you want to send them an FCM. Uh, well, you could have an analytics event for that purchase event and then create an audience for people who have done those purchases and then have a cloud message targeted for, those, for that specific audience that you could send out. Now, that doesn't necessarily happen in real time or right after that thing happens. It's more like, okay, that thing happened, and now you're gonna send an FCM at the time that you choose, and you'll be able to target that person who took that action. So you'll be able to message them and notify them. Now, if you wanna do something more real time or more like as, right after this happens, I wanna get their attention and let them know about something. So let's say again, a purchase event or that kind of thing. Um, so in that situation, it could be, well, okay, this person just purchased something and now I want to show them some kind of dialogue. For that, you could use Firebase in-app messaging. So if you're not familiar with it, Firebase in-app messaging provides a few different options for showing notifications in the app itself. There's different modals and different types of ways that you can get the user's attention, you know, send them a notification. And those can happen in more close to real time after specific things occur. So as soon as they purchase an event, after the analytics event happens, you can say, yeah, when that happens, I want to show this modal and say, hey, you know, you purchased some running shoes and did you know that there's a deal on tennis rackets uh, in this same store or something like that? Um, so that's when you can kind of get their attention and show them the notification at the same time if that's the kind of use case you're looking to satisfy um, in getting sending them some kind of notification. So uh, maybe that could work. Oh, wow. I'm sensing something. Must be the next, next question. question. This next question comes from Kara. And Kara asks, how do I build a route guard using Angular Fire? Great question, Kara. For those who aren't familiar, Angular has the concept of protecting routes or different URL paths in your app using a route guard. 
Um, so it'll have this kind of attribute when you configure your router to say, for whatever URL, can this user activate based on whatever security rule or access control that you care about? Um, so for example, if a user is not logged into your app, you might say they can only activate if they are logged in and set up those kind of rules. So with Angular Fire, you can actually do something similar and actually very easily using the Angular Fire auth guard. So this comes with like a pre-configured set of different rules that you might care about that might make sense for your app. So you can configure this really easily to say, okay, I want users to be able to access these URLs and activate them for if they have these specific conditions satisfied. And some of the out-of-box things that come with Angular Fire AuthGuard are things like, you know, is the user logged in, right? So they can activate if they're logged in. Are they not anonymous? That is, they can activate if they're not an anonymous user. And if they are anonymous, it'll just reject them and not allow them to access that part of your app. Similarly, for if their email has been verified or not, so they can only activate if their email is verified and so forth. There's a lot of really useful different settings there for securing access to different paths in your, in your application. Um, and you can do that with Angular Fire and the Angular Fire AuthGuard. For more details on that, there's a link below. Just click that and you can get the full list of all the different accesses um, and settings that you can use in that configuration. Great question, Kara. Alrighty, and that is all the time we have on this episode of Ask Firebase. Thank you all for submitting your questions. And if you have more questions that you'd like us to answer on the next episode, submit them in the YouTube comments, on Twitter, on Stack Overflow, and remember to put that hashtag Ask Firebase. Once again, remember to like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next episode. Hashtag Ask Firebase. Hashtag Ask Firebase.